They're hiding. They're a little shy. That's the thing. Worms will always go down, oh. down, down to the... Ooh. They are. They'll always go south. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's a great one. He's very, very thick. Oh. So I'm going to go ahead and just quickly drill the holes in. I'm able to get a lot of air, but at the same time, I don't want to create a lot of entry points for the flies. Like yeah, 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 so there's, yeah, so there's two bins. The top one he drilled a hole down the side to make it to get air inside to uh -huh. keep it aerobic. We, we like drilled holes down here, um, and that to let any of the moisture that comes from the worms and the, the moisture that's in the bin yeah. to seep through. And um, it's going to be like really rich. It'll be full of a lot of nutrients, and you can use that to fertilize plants. When I just probably get at least um, three quarters of the way full. I wonder if we have any food scraps. We probably could use those um, fava shells that we've been um, popping out the beans from. Warm food. They, they would like that. Um, you can read all about these in Worms Eat My Garbage, which is my personal worm bible. <laughs> so the, um, the newspaper, the worms love to eat and they need that carbon matter to eat, but this bedding kind of acts like a soft blueberry muffin. It's very cushy for them. And coconut coir is similar to peat, which is famous because it holds a lot of moisture. Um, Peat is not a renewable resource. It actually comes from swamps and it takes like hundreds of years to become peat. But coconut coir is uh, somewhat renewable. Um, these are the husks of coconuts. So the hairy husks are very um, moisture loving and they break them up into um, actually this brown powder behind me. And we just moistened it up so it's like kind of muddy. And we're gonna line the bottom with it. This is the worm's water bed. And they'll lay their babies in here and the, the food that they eat has gone through their systems. You know, they'll leave the castings on here. They live sort of in this middle layer. Like if it were a cake, they would like live in the raspberry filling. <laughs> okay. This is this is the this is the um the luxury suite. <laughs> Warm bins. They're getting they're getting the moist Love oil treatment. What else is coconut Burmy love. Yeah. <laughs> what? Is coconut corn used for other things? They usually use it in a growing medium. Um, like when you're doing a potting mix or a seed start mix. Um, if you have just soil, it doesn't hold water very well. So they put like things like this that hold that absorb. And then you also want it to be draining, so they'll put sand in as well. Worms are a little, like, not as smart as us, so they'll kind of stay where the food is, okay? Actually, they're great. I shouldn't put them down. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to give them a complex. So let's all keep okay. the, um, the fava pieces on one side. Then that side will get covered in the worm castings, which is the digestion. It's easier to harvest the castings. The fun thing a lot of people don't know is that worms don't actually eat the food. They do, but really what they're after is the bacteria that's growing on your food. So the mushier stuff tends to attract the molds and things first. Okay. Like your strawberries go bad kind of quickly, yeah. more quickly than your lettuce would yeah. grow mold. So they love the stuff that goes gets moldy first. Okay. And they're eating that bacteria and mold that's getting going on your food. So this stuff, if you can imagine, like how long it might take for it to start to develop mold, the worms are going to be like, all right, what else you got? Okay. <laughs> show, show me your bananas. <laughs> but like, but it's kind of a fun experiment. Yeah. Is to blend up all your scraps from okay. the week. Oh, like okay. maybe you don't want like to do it with four, you know, Saturday night and I mean you do. Yeah. Just blend up the food scraps. And then it makes it like that much easier <laughs> yes, for the worms to eat it. They'll just go through it. And they'll go through it quicker. Like, um so without further ado, let's get some worms on here. And we'll show you like the thing the other thing that people should keep in mind whenever you do a worm bin is 
worms can go through about the same amount of food as there are worms. So if you have a pound of worms, you can give them like a pound of food. A week. A week. Okay. Or so, yeah. That's how I like to think of it. So, yay. Basically, I can just kind of tell that the worms are getting healthier and happier by how big, much bigger. That one's kind of medium. Mm -hmm. But you know, yeah, these guys, these bigger ones are what you're looking for. Okay. These are all babies. Do you see all the little white squigglies? Oh, wow. So those are all. There are a lot of um, oh, this guy is wow. really. So what happens if you see a bunch of unhealthy ones? What do you do? Well, not unhealthy, just like you know, like if you're if you're feeding them only lettuces and stuff, that you're probably giving them like too much lettuces or cabbages or things that aren't like moist enough for them. Okay. So. You could do one of two things, just like let your lettuce go bad, or I keep like a water squirt bottle near my worm bin. Okay. Just to, if you keep adding moisture, then that'll bring the bacteria sooner. Okay. So um, normally I would just get another bucket of water and kind of like submerge these, this and then wring it out like a sponge. Um, get them nice and moist, saturated, like kind of blueberry muffin batter. And now this is their um, this is their blanket. So if the coconut coir is their is their mattress bedding, this is their blanket bedding. <laughs> so they need the carbon matter, which is the newspaper, to kind of push the food through their systems. Okay. You can also save your eggshells. Yeah. And coffee grounds. Okay. Which and tea tea bags. And kind of acts like the um, the metamucil. Okay. <laughs> well, think about that. Think about what that's doing in our sheet mold, right? Okay? Worms love that carbony pulp uh -huh. to help clean out their, their gizzards. So they're coming up underneath the sheet mulch and they're skimming it. And they're just taking a little bit off the bottom as they need it. Yeah. They're, act, they're actually aerating our soil. They're the tillers. They don't have to till. You'll just, she'll be home, she'll peel this back once a week. She'll make sure her little wormies are alive. Mm -hmm. And then she'll add her new fresh waste and cover them back up. Because I find that like a nice, fresh, moist um, layer of newspaper that doesn't have any food in it yeah. almost puts off like its own newspaper smell, yeah. which will mask the smell of the food. Uh, yeah, like it'll smell like newspaper instead of food. So I use that as like okay. a protection uh -huh. layer, almost like um, that's your duvet cover. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have great analogies. No, keep going with it, girl. <laughs> I'm gonna be my new home for the worms. The worms here came from Case Valley Farm, I believe. They're Case Valley Farm yep. prodigy. They're very smart worms. <laughs> and they know how to survive the city yeah. life. <laughs> You're gonna be a great worm mom, Casey. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. I'm excited. Yeah. All right, little wormies, time for bed. Do well in there.